We talk about Feel It Again with Derry Graham, the lead guitarist of Honeymoon Suite and one of their major songwriters. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Honeymoon Suite is another band like another performer, another Canadian performer we just featured, Kim Mitchell, who really should have made it bigger in the U.S. But the music's still there. You can still go back and listen to it, still go back and buy it, rediscover Honeymoon Suite, as a lot of our fans are rediscovering Kim Mitchell again and Max Webster after our interview. But their biggest song in the U.S. from their sophomore album, The Big Prize, came out in 1986, reached number 34 in the U.S., number 8 on the U.S. rock charts, and number 16 on the Canadian charts. It was written by their keyboardist, Ray Colburn, who left the band shortly after. Why did Ray leave the first time? Did he just want to do his own thing? I know he came back, but why did he... Um, Ray was really unhappy with... He did not like the management or the manager. Um, and he, yeah, exactly. He thought that he could do better on his own. He got to a point where I, he thought, well, you know, I'm kind of semi-famous. I don't need this now. I can, like, go and I'm sure I'll get in another band and do all this other stuff. And I think he made a huge mistake. Yeah. But, you know, you can't stop somebody who's who's not happy. And I don't want them there if they're not happy. So... Uh, you know, raise his own. Uh, I think that he wanted to be more in charge of things, and uh, you know, maybe we would have started butting heads eventually because he raised a great writer, but he's a keyboard player and going off in a different direction than I wanted to. With uh, with feel it again, and which Ray wrote, uh, is, is that is that what happens? I think that's what happens sometimes when you get a hit at the time, biggest hit you had at the time, you had bigger, but but. That happens a lot when someone says, hey, we got this big hit. I'm, uh, you know, did he want a bigger par- part of the pie? Or based on that, do you think he wanted to go solo or what? Um, well, like I said earlier, I I think he really had some problems with the management. Right. Because right. we had a pretty aggressive manager. And I, I'll say I had problems, too. I mean, every band did. It's like all of a sudden, like when there's no money, everybody's happy. But when there's success and money then all of a sudden you've got too many cooks in the kitchen yeah. and everybody from the label to management and publisher are all telling you what they think you should do and what you have to do and you do to do this and that. So there was a lot of like head butting there. Um, management wanted, you know, to just, they pushed us so hard. Um, and I think Ray just got fed up with, you know, with the way he thought, you know, it should go. And so I think that was one big reason that, that he left because he couldn't stand that, that part of it. And I guess uh, he thought, yeah, feel it again. Uh, I thought, again, he thought he could do, you know, go on to bigger and better things on his own. Yeah, did you uh, did you know that was uh, that was going to be big, that song, when, when he brought it to the table? Uh, no, not really. Because when, we're, like, Ray was a keyboard player and he didn't really sing. He just kind of brought in the, the half-baked, like, like the song, he had the kind of chords and some of the lyrics, and he would sing it kind of softly. But then he gave it to Johnny, who just belts it out, and to Bruce and to me, where we just took it from here to yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and you have to give a lot of credit to the band and the producer putting so much into it. It wasn't a hit when he, when he brought it in, and neither were some of my songs. But once they went through the rest of the band and the production, they became hits. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Second album, Big Prize. Um, going into that album with the success of the first one, Bruce Fairburn producing, what was the vibe going into that album? I mean, all of a sudden, you, you obviously had a bigger budget. You must have, because that's kind of usually the way it works. Yeah, for sure. Well... Um, it was off the road. I mean, so much success on the first record, then and the videos and everything. Then the label is like, okay, we're kicking this into high gear. You guys have to follow, do the sophomore follow up, or whatever you want to call it. This one has got to be really good. We're throwing all the money into it, and we interviewed a few producers, and Bruce Fairburn's name came up because he'd done the, the Loverboy records and some other stuff, and he was a Canadian and. Uh, we went and had a meeting with him out west, and it just—I uh, I love the guy. I mean, uh, just a great, a great guy, and I had a really good feel for him. So we uh, we decided to work with him, and uh, he just sent us off to write songs. And we went back and forth for a few months because um, Bruce was very much a song guy. He wouldn't take us in the studio till we had the songs written, which is a smart thing to do. 
So uh, we eventually, one thing led to another. Next thing you know, we're in uh, Little Mountain, Vancouver. Bob Rock Engineering, by the way, which is incredible. Wow. This is before he, he, he exploded. When uh, Bruce and Bob used to work together as a team, producer and engineer. So, how, you know, so much talent there. Um, so there we were. We went into the studio. We actually started uh, in Long Island because our management thought they found the studio called the Boogie Hotel down in Long Island, New York. And it's supposed to be like, hey, Foghat recorded there. So you guys should go down there and record. So Bruce and Bob and all of us went down there to cut beds. And it was a disaster because it was in this old house and the wiring was all shot and Bob Rock couldn't connect anything. You know, like everything was just a mess uh, electronically. He couldn't get anything to work. So after about a week, he said, you know, screw this. I want to go back to Little Mountain, which is what we did, and just move the whole operation back there, and it was incredible. We have a lot of clips from Derry Graham on our sister channel, Rock History Canada. Our protocol with Canadian acts is we talk about the songs on Rock History Music that we know this audience would know. Remember, there'll be links to Honeymoon Suite in the description of this video. More conversation with Derry Graham coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos, and buy a t-shirt. Help support our channel. I'm John Bowden. Mm -hmm.